morning and welcome to a new reading week. I am absolutely pumped. Um, actually, the internet today has broken or something. I don't know, but the internet isn't working. So no Netflix for me, no Amazon Prime for me, a lot of reading for me aside from work. And even I can't work that much potentially. So what are we doing this week? Um, I need to finish this today and not much left. So confident to do that. Then I finally need to finish this. I don't read much German books as you know, might know but this one really caught my attention and I have been loving it so far. First of all I love the covers. Um, this is a German publisher and they are quite known for beautiful covers and when you order from them you oftentimes even get signed books which i find awesome um this book is about four people in seven dimensions and a world that's kind of crumbling down it's breaking apart and these four people have sp special abilities one can see when somebody's gonna die and why they're what they're dying off um, another person can read people's dreams and i just enjoyed this book so much. I read 150 pages and I put it aside for other priorities for body reads and I am so mad at myself that I didn't pick it back up. So I need to finish these two. Can you tell that I'm currently in love with tassels on? Aside from that, I have reduced my September TBR down to four books that I would love to finish, but I'm probably not going to finish them all. I'll just do my best to finish them until Wednesday. So I have three days to finish as much as possible. I finally want to get to Slaughterhouse Five, which is an, an anti war science fiction. The non fiction of the month that I have picked was recommended by my worldwide um, director of my like team. And I really want to get to this. I borrowed this in the library. Then the club was reading Heart of Iron, which was on my shelf forever. I wanted to read it forever. And I'm so in the mood for science fiction, fantasy. So this is perfect. And I really want to get to this one as well. And then the is it Books and Jam book club was reading um, The Invention of Wings, which I got from the library in German. And I really wanted to finish this for the book club as well. Let's see how far I get. I have already picked a few for my October TBR, but I don't know what I'm going to start with um, in October. I think the only thing that I pretty much know that I am going to read quite early in October is We're the Lucky Ones because of a book club that happens on October 7th. Other than that, I'm really looking forward to The Poppy Wars. The Poppy Wars is a traveling book. I'm also really hyped to start The Black Kids. I don't know what I'm going to start with. It might depend on some buddy reads and it might depend on some group reads, etc. On another note, um, I received received mail today which isn't a subscription box but this i have just found out that this uh, company has a subscription box as well it might be new i have just ordered the subscription box it is a tea order and i just wanted to show you because i love the branding it's a, a tea company from the uk i got sample packs so they um they're not the, the biggest like brand where you can see the branding real nice but you can see a little. So they do have a, a vegan latte, which is completely like really colorful and stuff. Um, and this is the purple one. It's called the Hippie. It's a powder latte signature drink and it's um, flavored apple and lavender. And that just sounds amazing. Add a splash of boiling hot water and whisk or stir until the powder is fully dissolved. Top up with steamed or cold milk of your choice. Then I bought one sample size and one Meet the Gang box, which has so they have loose leaf tea and they have tea bags. And in this are tea bags uh, because I didn't know which ones I wanted to order because a lot of them just sounded amazing. I think this would be perfect for the book box that I'm creating for Kim. Um, if you've seen last week, I have read The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I was sadly a little bit disappointed by this book. Um, if you want to know more, it's at the end of last week's vlog. But I'm creating a book box for Kim and 
she's gonna get some tea. Sample that I ordered is called The Romantic and look at him. I mean, I love this um, stylized drawing and everything. So this is strawberry champagne white tea. Let's meet the gangs. So we have Miss Arctic, an herbal peppermint tea, La Chica, lemon and lime. And then the Explora is lemon and ginger herbal tea. And we have Miss Yoga, chamomile tea. The Soul Man is Blueberry Blues Herbal Tea. Have the Viking, which is a licorice digestive tea. The Hipster is Raspberry and Mint Herbal Tea. The Nurse is Lemon and Honey Roibosh Tea. And we have the Cool Caribbean is Mango and I Pineapple Oolong Tea. Mwah, that sounds perfect for me as well. The Butler is Earl Grey. And then the Red Race is English Breakfast Tea. Let's try and work a little bit. Potentially might not work because no internet and then let's finish warbreaker which i'm loving so much and i'm expecting something to happen now on the last like 50 pages so i think in this lighting you can't really see but it is purple but just barely i think it's the recommendation of 1.5 gram of powder is not enough it tastes like nothing I smell apple. Let's do three more scoops, which is ridiculous. We're now at six scoops. That's almost a third of the package already. Oh, that's too much. Oh, that's bitter. Fun gimmick, not worth it. It just, it, the taste isn't strong enough and it's just way too expensive. So we're going to make the Cool Caribbean mango and pineapple oolong. It smells amazing looks amazing too you can really tell it really looks like quality tea in there not like mass produced let me what i um hate about mass produced tea is oftentimes that the tea is ground so fine and the leaves are so unrecognizable they don't necessarily take water in and really like the steeping is different somehow and when you buy good loose leaf tea you can tell that the leaves expand a lot i was really impressed by this because they have tea bags exactly the size how they the tea expands and it actually does expand. So two and a half hours later, I finished Slaughterhouse 5. Battling between three and four out of five stars. I enjoyed the writing style, which is quite unique. Um, we're following who um, has experienced uh, World War II as an American prisoner and he is telling the story of this time, but in a time jumpy way. So apparently he has been abducted by aliens, uh, displayed in a, in a zoo on this other like world, and um, he is time jumping now. He's telling the story of what happened in the 1940s, jumping in time. We hear about his life after the war with his wife, etc. We hear about what he experienced during the war and then also what he experiences in this zoo. Not as absurd as it could be, which is good. I don't like absurd. It feels funny, but then it's not laugh out loud funny for me. I was like, okay, this doesn't feel like it's taking itself too seriously, but it's not making a mockery out of out of these topics. I think I expected a little bit more from it because it got gets so much praise and is a very quick read but i do recommend taking a little bit more time i don't know i expected more from this so i just finished drinking the earl grey which was incredibly good and i just started drinking the hipster which is the herbal tea that i said um that sounds really good it's somewhere between a fruit tea and a, an herbal tea and I love it. So I'm about to finish AI Superpowers. I think I might be skimming the last 50-ish pages. The first two thirds of this book were so good, so like captivating and I just wanted to read and read and read. And I just loved all the information about the big tech companies, how they work, the difference between the American and the Chinese market. And it gave me everything that I wanted in a 
very well written style that I love to follow and I just didn't stop reading pretty much. But chapter 7 and chapter 8 out of 9 suddenly becomes very personal. Um, we're talking and I, I am currently in chapter 7 and I'm at a point where I just want to put this down. I don't mind reading about it but I feel like it's the wrong book. I didn't come here for preaching that we shouldn't be working like machines, uh, that family is everything. Everybody needs to make that decision for themselves. I love my job. I love working. Um, and I feel like I have the balance that I'm satisfied with. I have a son whom I love, but he doesn't want a lot of attention. He doesn't want to spend a lot of time with me. That might be because he's 15, but he's also a very private person, a very introverted person, and he just doesn't want that attention and that connection. You've been following my vlogs and you see my life. You see how much time I spend with people and um, even with my future plans of wanting to travel the world, um, that plan is alone. I want to travel the world alone. I want to live in my car and travel Europe, and I don't want anybody to hold me back to tie me down. I've made compromises my whole life with having a son and then being in a relationship. Does that mean that I want to be alone for, for the rest of my life? No, not necessarily. But it also means that I don't need another person in my life to feel fulfillment and feel happiness. And I'm a little bit sick of people preaching to me that I need a family, that I need people around me, that I that this is what I'm going to be regretting at the end of my life. Because um, honestly, I feel like I most likely will regret if I don't get to travel a lot more than if I don't form stronger relationships, stronger bonds to people that I can spend a lot more time with. If I fall in love, yes, that will change. I, I will give this a chance, but I'm not desperately looking for somebody to tie me down. You know what I mean? When I met my husband, it was exactly the same. I fell in love um, head over heels. I didn't plan on sharing my life with anybody, but I made room for him. Anyways, back to the story. I don't need this in here. I wanted to read about superpowers i wanted to read about ai about the development yeah let's see if chapter eight and nine are going to change my perception of it good morning it is officially the last day of september the weather forecast has said this whole week is going to be rainy but look at this we have beautiful fall weather we have one more day hoping to finish Chef de Wolken today. But first, today we are having a cooking class for Mexican cooking from the club that I'm in, which I'm super excited for. So let's go into that first. I'm back home, had a wonderful lunch, met some lovely ladies, and I'm gonna start working now. I have quite a lot of work to do, so it's gonna be a long day. Before I do that, I will check out the Once Upon a Book Club that just came. A little bit torn. You see how packed it is? I hope everything's all right. Super excited to see what the book is. I have put 40 pages for a book aside. No, actually 384 to read as a book box because I'm anticipating a book well, there's two book boxes that are being created for me right now. One by um, Adrienne and one uh, by a person that's still a mystery. Wow, this is full. Stuff falling out. This reminder, I kind of missed this reminder for the past couple of times. To fully experience this box, remember to only open your gifts once you reach the given page. That's the idea of this box. So let's see what we have in here. Oh, look at this. They gave us a little sheet of stickers as a sorry for the delay. We have a letter from the author and then we have a postcard which they do every single time as well the book of the month is the daughters of foxcoat manor interesting cover and it has 351 52 pages so it's um, below the number that i put aside for reading a book uh, box book which is good. An isolated forest estate, a family with a terrible secret, the discovery that changes everything. Rita is a nanny to the glamorous Harrington's two children, a small town girl raised by her grandmother. She fell in love with a seemingly perfect London family and then tragedy strikes. With a clan reeling, Mrs. Harrington, the children and Rita are sent to Foxcott Manor for the summer to recuperate far from prying eyes. When a baby is abandoned just outside,
outside the gate, the family takes her in and will never be the same. Within days, a person will lie dead in the woods and a society scandal explodes. And decades later, so this is uh, going across decades, a Londoner Sylvie has holes in her family history and an urgent need for answers. Overcoming her own deep-rooted fear of what she might find, she sets out to discover the truth and unpick her mother's little white lies. But the past is already far closer than she can imagine. This could be the perfect October read, but this could also be not necessarily what I'm up for. The book box club always uh, takes a quote and creates a beautiful postcard from it. I think it's a nice quote. A flyer that says book club kid. This is new and the book club kid has an interview with the author, discussion questions and read along dates uh, where you can join them on Instagram and Facebook live. So the gift are page 67 whoa this is heavy 182 and then page 352 is small this could be jewelry or something this is actually not a sticker anymore this is printed on the cover oh so the nostalgic one is just put in in here we'll discover that later let's make some coffee and get to working so i made myself some tea because my stomach is really in pain right now licorice digestive tea but i used the scoop to try the purple neon latte and made it with water and look at how dark this got like this isn't purple anymore this is like dark maybe i have really misjudged the amount the first time but it still doesn't taste like much like at all let's put a splash of milk in here i'm really hesitant about opening up the blue one because the blue one i could uh, give it away as a gift right now but then do i really want to give away a gift that i don't know if it's going to be good hey let's start serpent and dove finally i think i wanted to read this a couple of times completely forgot what this is about i just know that i have a beautiful edition the reading i'm gonna sell this so i'm buddy reading this with jen and with ilva and i think ilva mentioned that there's or Jen, that there's some Romans in here and that they're ready for Romans. And they were like, oh, I know you don't want to hear this CC. And I was like, yeah, nope, I don't. I'm not against Romans if it's done well and if it isn't the only thing carrying the story. You know what would be fun? To just have a, make a video of first lines, last lines, and my writing. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Somehow I feel like doing this. It's Friday. I'm on my way um, to my parents, to a meeting, and the TV show this night, first off, if I visit my parents, they need for me to bring cheese from this place farm right here it's pretty much the best cheese ever <laughs> i had a wonderful day so far so i started on the way listening to um sometimes i like which is a thriller we're following this woman who is in a coma she's really in a lockdown in the uh, lockdown syndrome people think that she's in a coma at this point we're following three timelines the timeline of her being in the coma right now versus her before and then as a kid and there's a mystery we don't know why she's in a coma really i think i'm already like 35 40 percent in and i'm loving it good morning it's sunday i look like crap so we did have a makeup workshop last night i was too tired to clean it all up i really wanted to spend the day reading but i pretty much spent the day in bed and I, what i will do now is i am going to sit in in my car and drive for an hour to pick up a mannequin i have purchased it for 20 bucks i have so much more clothes to sell so i did sell clothes worth around 200 250 euros i'm getting to the point where some of the clothes just don't look right on a um, on a hanger i'm gonna finish um sometimes i lie on the way and then i will start we were the lucky ones um on all your book look at what might happen with my hair oh my gosh i give sometimes i lie four out of five stars i really did enjoy it um there's some confusing stuff going on but it was too to my taste. I have read a couple of people talking about the ending and confusing bits and some people don't like it because it's too confusing or too dominantly going into a direction that they didn't like. I loved it. It was the perfect um, mixture of twists and turns and um, stuff that I um, expected versus not expecting things. I'm, I'm not the person who speculates a lot about if a book 
gets me to start speculating and I have theories in my head, it's usually really good. And that's what happened here. I think there were a few minor things that just weren't to my taste as much and that's why it's four out of five stars. It's, it's not like, oh my god, I loved it. <laughs> five out of five stars. Then I started, we were the lucky ones. I am 20% in. I am reading this for a book club that is happening on a Zoom meeting on Wednesday. I have to say right now it is incredibly confusing because there's so many people and the first five chapters all different people it's all the same family but it's all different people all like different perspectives and even with the different perspectives they are even talking then about children and spouses etc it's so much i have a harder time getting into a world on audiobook because um in a physical book i keep going back and forth checking oh i'm in chapter abby and i can double check and know which chapter I'm in, and I can't do that in audiobook. I'm okay with this week's reading. I think it went okay. I had ups and downs, and it was a an average reading week, which I'm quite satisfied with. The only thing that I that sucks is that I didn't finish the Schöpfer der Wolken because I really wanted to finish it. It's not on my October TBR because I have so many books on my October TBR. I mean, I can tell you I have over 10,000 pages on my October TBR. I'm going to take some time off from work, so I will have some a little bit more time to read day four, and I have read one. I'm really looking forward to October reading, but I know that I won't be able to finish the Schöpfer der Wolken either. Once I'm done with my 400 pages a day, I'll just turn to the shop for the work and guess what i bet this day will never come when i'm on track with my daily reading and i can actually open up another book i don't think that's gonna come looking forward to next week's reading i am taking part in a couple of challenges on goodreads that i'm really enjoying i'm doing a challenge that's called my restaurant rocks where i'm doing with a team we do scavenger hunt in the books that we read we write down all like the foods and drinks and create meals and then once every four weeks our restaurant gets customers and we have to see if we have enough meals for them it's hilarious and then we have another challenge that is around the world in 80 days where where we have I think seven legs and we can do it at our own time um, but we do it in a team so we have like let's say eight prompts and we're four people in a team and we need to make sure everybody at least covers one prompt. I think that we're on the second leg and we actually have 13 prompts to cover and I committed to four of them. If you want to see my my monthly TBR, I have shelves on Goodreads where I just call them October. So my October shelf is my TBR for this year, October, and then it stays my is until next year, October. And then I check uh, what are the books that I haven't read since that are still on this shelf and that I haven't read. So pretty much saying that's the plan. That's how I, um, how I do this and I enjoy having the books that I once pop up again and kind of force me to um, put them on my TBR again. I kind of like that. And I'll see you again next week, hopefully. I hope to see you again soon. Bye! So we have the shelf love and we have the wildest dreams the wildest dreams is a box that doesn't cost as much as the other boxes it's a little bit cheaper it always has like a self-care product and some consumable product like i think something to drink or a cookie or something and usually a paperback and what i like is that they have a different type of selection of books than most of the big other ones. The April 2020 is called Rise Up. We have a handwritten card. I just wanted to say thank you for sticking with us through this difficult time. It's really appreciated. I hope you're keeping safe and well. Love Zoe from Wildest Dreams. We have a tea. It's uh, a Phoenix Fire Must Burn. Um, I think that's probably inspired by Crown of Feathers, which I love. And this is a black tea with rose buds and rose petals um that sounds delicious and then we have phoenix feather embrace your power on your fire with this feather from the legendary phoenix bird well i think um i know what the book is it's not inspired by crown of feathers there was a um phoenix 
book released recently, I think. So this is a little feather. What am I supposed to do with this? We have a little notepad. We have the tea bags. I love that they're giving us Lewis tea and they're giving us tea bags. Let dreams be your wings. I kind of like this notepad. It feels heavy, but I like it. So what I like as well is that they always um, wrap the book. Oh, this is a Bells inspired print. Oh, come on. We have a art print, really. So the book is Phoenix First Must Burn. Stories of Black Girl Magic, Resistance and Hope. It's actually signed. That's cool. It's, it's an anthology and that is why I did not have it on my radar. Wonderful cover. I love the cover. I just hate anthologies. Filled with stories of love and betrayal, strength and resistance, this collection contains an array of complex and true-to-life characters in which you cannot help but see yourself reflected. Witches and scientists, sisters and lovers, priestesses and rebels, the herons shine brightly. You will never forget them. And together with that we have a bookmark. It's a description of what a phoenix is. Maybe that belongs to the bottle. I don't know. I'm always torn about this box. It's probably not worth it for most people. I like the tea. This time it was not worth it for me at all. Um, Let's look at the Shelf Love Crate and I am hoping this is better. I'm wondering if this is the same box, um, if this is, if there's a difference between Shelf Love and Shelf Love Crate. I must have been confused because the Shelf Love Crate had a wonderful colorful box and I just don't know if they have run out of boxes. That's the Shelf Love Crate, yeah. They must have run out of beautiful boxes. The boxes once looked like this and I loved it. They still have this wonderful cute spoiler card, so that's good. We have a tote bag that is a weird, fabric very sturdy harder than linen normally it smells a little chemical so all these products that are custom printed are cheaply produced in asia we i'm assuming we all know this these are not like cute etsy store handmade items these are like two dollar items in asia that you get custom printed and then they cost three or four bucks depending on how many you're getting if you're only getting one or two it's probably 50 bucks but um, if you're getting uh, ten thousand, it would probably be 50 cents these are not quality big quality products but this is very normal in the industry that is what most swag most more merchandisers are doing i am so annoyed right now i unboxed the wildest dreams battery on the phone just died probably didn't record any of it damn it i'm not gonna record it again but to summarize the wildest dreams is okay we're down to the shelf of crate i loved their design and their boxes were looking like this now we have plain boxes i don't know if they just have a reorder problem or what it is but they have a cute spoiler card this month's topic and this was like the november box yes this is how long this is sitting with me if you want me to review the shelf love crate again let me know let shelf love crate know let them send me one to review so maybe i can actually find this hobby the topic of the month is reading the restricted section which i love i love the shelf love honestly the there was the shelf love crate and the shelf love reads they were more of a reader box and they were not about fandom items they were about bookish items and i love that but they c probably didn't have enough people buying it um so i feel really sad that this is gone and i just mentioned that we all should know that these type of products just as this are cheaply made in asia the material value usually isn't the best but it doesn't mean the product isn't and this is a bin with 40 books on the cover that have been banned or challenged and i just love this i think um the fabric uh, feels very good and it feels water resistant then this says a master potent potions it's a storage book not my choice of product but that's fine court of mist and fury it's like a motion picture poster not my type of product either it's very close to an art print which i'm not a fan of but i think it doesn't count as a product and that makes it okay we have a bookmark there are worse crimes than burning books one of them is not reading them i read banned books this is listed as a product it kind of looks and feels like a promotional item which i think this is this is actually better quality and this is advertising for a book coming out robert Bitty books that is advertising this is advertising for seraphina and the black cloak this is a bookmark from shelf love which again is better paper quality than this one so i'm a little bit mad about this being a product and then we have a little mirror i do i dazzle you it's a twilight inspired pocket mirror 
it's good enough. We have um, Strange the Dreamer chess pieces. This is like a, the collectible that they put in every box um, until you have a full game, I guess. And I think there's a, a pin in here somewhere, which I do not see. I don't see a pin. I'm missing the pin. And the book of the month is Blood Air. We are thrilled to include Blood Air in our final crate of 2019. We fell in love with this book early in 2019 and were heartbroken to see Emily pull it from publication. We are overjoyed uh, she chose to share her words with the world despite despite early criticism. We hope you will read and enjoy this book as it was meant to be, um, a fantasy novel with a unique perspective. We hope you enjoy Emily's letter and signed book plate. I haven't seen anything about the controversy. Please, if you have followed the controversy about around this um, and why this was pulled, please let me know in the comments down below. I would be super interested in that. Kind of what makes me want to read it more. So this was the Shelf Love Great. I think this is a good enough box if you're into the fandom items i think it's good it's fine is it the best probably not um is this one in particular a little bit disappointing i think so but it's fine i have stopped subscribing to it um at this point so if you want me to review it convince them to send me one i can't afford another box right now i'm gonna start selling a few books and then i can afford a couple of boxes Just love it.